Oh, Suki, it's Wednesday night in the suburbs. I'm, I'm a little bit of a mess right now. Ring-a-ling, hear I'm them finishing ring. finishing dinner. I don't know what I'm doing. We're hanging out with Suki, some friends. Suki, you at mess status is usually better than people at their best. <laughs> I love how you that? Saying, that, that, that sound good? I love you saying, that. saying that, but I really feel... Uh, that was good, right? Uh, that's a good tonight. That's not a bad pickup line, Suk. I may use that next time. Yeah. You know, honey. Um, Hi, everyone. Donna Frechetto had... joining us. Uh, Judy Rogers and Ileano Engelbrecht joining us. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Jessica Flowers or Jesse. Donna Frechetto. Louise, Louise is like, you hey, look everybody. marvelous. Really, Louise. Everybody Thank you very, very kind of you to say. I don't feel that way. Deb Rouch, Susan there. Smith, Suki Scott, happy hump day. It is hump day. Shy, shy, Wendy. Hump day, Amy, hump day. Kathy, Kathy. Sue, Anita. Bam. Anita Moorhead? Is that Anita Moorhead? Yes, it's an e the Anita Moorhead. <laughs> oh, boy. Hold on. Let me just uh, share one more. Suki, I'm very excited about tonight's show. You know that, don't you? I know that because... By the way, I tweaked gonna... my back today, just so you know. You did? What did you use? A little Ben Gay? Little, 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 little heat, little cold? What, what I haven't you used do? anything yet. I just thought I could maybe stretch it out. Not feeling right. good. You're not feeling well, huh? Mm -mm. Remember last time you blew out your knee, you, you left the show. Did I tell you I was in so much was pain? I I mean, I'm not there yet. Ass. So we'll see. What a disaster. Isn't that interesting how like one little tweak at a certain age, one little move, one move to the side, to the left, oh, you're moving. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it, Suki. What's going on? What's the good word, babe? How we doing? Listen, we got Kev. Uh, I always want to say Kevin Frazier, but nope. he's from uh, Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Matt, Tonight, Kevin Frazier. Matt Frazier is joining us at 8 o'clock. He's the celebrity psychic medium for Meet the Frasers, supposedly does great readings, Suk. And I was promised that you and I will get a reading from Matt Frazier tonight, right you here. You and I will never <laughs> be together. Never um, forever. Like I got the librarian look. I just said I got the pain look. I'm like trying to like, you know what? Okay, so let's talk about what happened. So you get to a certain age, you turn to right. the right, and you think you're going to be okay, and you're not okay. Yes. You get that little – sometimes I get, like, on my back, you get, like, someone grabbing, oh. like, a muscle. Yes. Yes, right? Scotty. And you can't breathe. And yes, it's like, Scotty. And, like, and you're just like, oh, shit. Yes, oh, Scotty. Yes. Right? That's like, what it is. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Camille wanted to know, hi, Scotty, wonder where you've been. I haven't seen you on Channel 11 for quite some time. <laughs> quite some time. That's been a while, right? Where is uh, it? Let's, since I think uh, February of 2019. You used to come online at Acme, my favorite customer. It was so nice to see you. Camille, Camille used to see you. I actually came on her line, huh? Yeah, All she right. loved you. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> Acme closed, Suk. I can't, can't go there anymore. Mm, sorry, Camille. We're a Wegmans town. We're a Wegmans town. Suk, you know what's you know what we just did today? You know what we booked today? What? Who'd you book? So camp, obviously, sleepaway camp's closed, right? Stop it. So our sleepaway camp, what they're doing is they're doing family weekends, three-night, four-day weekends at the camp. So you go with your family, I guess, because now it's positioned as a hotel. So okay. you can go with your you go with your family, three nights, four days. Okay. You go with your family. You stay in a bunk, just you, just you for your fit, just you and your family, mm -hmm. which is usually a bunk for like ten people. And you are at camp. They got the activities going, three meals a day, the nighttime activities. We're, dude, we booked it. We booked it for the middle of July. We're going. I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait for my wife. To hear that reveille going at seven thirty in the morning. So what is to it get like Thursday, up. Friday, Saturday, Sunday? You guys are going to like camp. Yep, we're gonna be. It's gonna be like we're at camp, summer summer camp for the weekend. It's gonna so be. What do the great. adults do while the kids are like at play? Like, oh no, no it's, it's summer camp for everybody. There's activities for the adults, for the kids. 
at nighttime after dinner, you got the evening activity. They're going to have like Lara doing? what's Lara doing? Oh, Lara's going to be, she's going to be hiking. She's going to be swimming. She's going to be, and the, she's going to be water skiing. It's going to be unbelievable. So Amy Weaver is correct. It's like dirty dancing cam. Yes. We're, it's like dirty dancing Sook. We're going to, we're going to have raids at night. We're going to be in the lake. We're going to be in the pool. It's going to be wild. All three meals included. It's going to be unbelievable. Are you skinny dipping or is there going to be like a talent show? Yes. There will be a talent show, Sook. Maybe they'll let me host it or I'll sing. <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll go, maybe I'll go live from the camp so you can see it. Oh, you're so um, funny. I love you. It's going to be great. It's are you going to send great. pictures when you're like, you know, are we going to like yeah. do a show from the camp? I feel like Listen, we should. Here, here's my prediction. First yes. activity, Scotty boy pulls a muscle. He's done for three days. That's what's going to happen. Scotty, That's what I'm can I tell you something? I pulled a muscle. I don't know. I, 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 I've I, never pulled my things before, but I am so out of shape that. Oh, yeah, so yeah. You never pulled anything before? I pull a lot of things. I pull, I pull a lot of things, things, but not those things. But. Donna Freshetto <laughs> says, oh, Scotty, you can't watch your favorite channel. You know what that is. Oh, I, listen, I'll bring my uh, I'll bring my computer with me. I'll get a little Wi-Fi. <laughs> up there. But yeah, no, so they're doing it every week in the summer, Thursday through Sunday. So different families can come. And I think they have like, you know, they could fit like there's like 30 bunks on boys and girls side all together. Wait, you're not going to be with your and, children? You know, no, no, I'm going to every each family gets their own bunk. Okay. So okay. it's not going to be it's not going to be that crowded, and it's going to be just you know I'm going back to sleepaway camp, Sue. I've been waiting for this for thirty years. I'm going so, back. Are you going to steal the canoe and take the hot chicks out? Oh, to the the dude, I'm going to I'm going to steal the canoe. I used to bring fireworks <laughs> with me in the middle of the night. Send them off. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good. Your wife time is going to be like, what kind of fireworks? Or she's have you got? Uh, did you guys dude. ever meet a camp where you're like, is your love story? Bl- no. Yeah, uh, our love story is uh it's not as not as glamorous as yours, but uh <laughs> well, Bobby Ross says, why do a bungee jump and what, a hooker a have bungee, in common? What do a bungee jump and a hooker oh. have in common? There you go, Bobby. Uh, they're both here. They're both cheap, fast, and if the rubber breaks, you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Ross. <laughs> Oh. Joan, Joan Salt from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, hello, hello, Joan. Hello, hello. Lancaster. <laughs> hello, Lancaster. Uh, you know, I worked in uh, WHP TV in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Joan. Harrisburg, PA. Harrisburg, yeah. PA. I didn't work at WGAL. I ended up working at WHP, uh, the CBS affiliate. Just so you know, Joan. And I went to Dickinson College, Joan, so you know. You went to Dickinson? I went to Dickinson. Uh, Sook, um, anything you want to touch on in the news today before we get to... Uh... <laughs> what is there not to touch on in the news? Let's talk about it. You want to talk <laughs> well, about listen, it? You, I, it's funny because I turned on the radio for about five minutes today to MSNBC, and I heard how the states were blowing up with COVID. Everybody's still reopening. Um, the four friends in Florida were at a bar. They bar, all, got, yep. they all got it. Are, and they all tested positive for Everyone. COVID. All four of them at the bar. Oh, yeah. Everybody. No, no, there were twelve. There were twelve. No, I thought it was four women that were at the bar at that bar. This is another another one. Florida care worker and fifteen friends can track COVID nineteen at a bar. <laughs> It's insane. There was another headline that said there was four friends that went to an, I mean, this must be another Florida bar, but the, yeah. all four of them tested positive for COVID. So can you imagine all four of them were together and then yeah. they were at this bar, they go to that bar. That means everybody in the vicinity was exposed. Sook, how about this? Here's the, here's the, the first paragraph. A Mayo Clinic worker who stayed indoors for months in Florida to avoid getting the coronavirus says she finally broke quarantine to go to a bar with pals earlier this month, <laughs> leaving her and 15 of her friends with the virus. She writes, the first night we go out, Murphy's Law, a 40-year-old healthcare worker from Jacksonville. So 14 of the girls got it. They all tested positive. And I heard today that the median age of the virus came down from like 65 to 34. Oh, my God. Uh, listen, Debbie Hollinger wants to say, if we can say hello to her grandson, Wyatt. Wyatt. Oh, say hi. Hey, 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 Wyatt. How you doing? Hi, Wyatt. <laughs> hi, Wyatt. Grandma's not teasing you. We're just hanging out. So, uh, um, Marcia from Boston. 
Where is she from? Boston? Boston. I, that's the first Boston we've ever seen. I, I have seen this whole time. Yeah, um, yeah, but can, yeah. I, can I tell you something, Scotty? So if these people, okay, a lot of people are doing outdoor dining, right? A lot of people are like, oh, we're going to sit outdoors. It's going to be great. You know, like the bars, and we're going to sit outside. All of these people are testing positive for COVID sitting outside. <laughs> so do you want to go outside and eat? Question, just to question people. I'm curious to know what your answers are. Uh, it's insane. Listen, it's the nice weather. It's making people crazy. It's making them forget what the hell's going on. Why can't you like, you know what my girlfriend and I did? We got takeout. We brought it in and then we all sat outside in our front lawn. That's why I'm still finishing my dinner. We sat nice. outside. What do you got? Car. What do you got there? What do you, what um, do you got? I had a little, we, we were in the mood for some Spanish food. Nice. So I got camarones, ajillo. Camarones, ajillo. I remember mm -hmm. you used to, you used to eat that crap on the morning show. Some Love like it. crazy. I don't uh, Rose, Suki, what do you have? I'm, I'd have like a bagel with cream cheese. And yeah. you got this. Okay, hey, can you heat this up for me? And the kid would go heat it up. And I'm like, Suki, what the hell? It's 730 in the morning. Arroz con pollo. Uh, Cinco de Mayo. I'm like, what the hell are you eating? <laughs> That's why you, you always remain timeless and beautiful. Your shape is just very svelte and gorgeous. Yeah. You're, just, you're gorgeous. Suki, listen, as we talk about the uh, headlines, I want to bring in the gentleman whose show we're going to be on tomorrow. Because you and Absolutely. I, at 12 noon tomorrow, we're going to be on To The Point with a fellow, very handsome guy named Eric Mitchell, uh, who had Phil Paz on, mm. uh, I believe, last week. Phil was on right, the show. Phil was talking about that. Yes, he was. Right, right. Phil was on the show. So let's bring in Eric. Eric Mitchell hey, Eric. in the house. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? Ladies and gentlemen, Eric, Eric said he got so many requests to have us on, Souk, that finally our agent spoke, the, the the negotiations, the paperwork, boom, tomorrow we're through. on. I mean, we're all going to get paid. It's all going to be good. It's good. <laughs> it, it was such oh. demand. It was like, well, if we can't have Phil, can we have you know Scott and Suki, please? Can well, we here's the deal. Here's the deal. Scotty, it's, it's so weird because Scotty and I get busy, and then we get weirdly busy, and then we're not busy, and then we're really not busy. So um, it's like this weird time where things are stepping up, and we're starting to open here in New York, and uh, production is starting to like get going. So it's 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 kind of crazy. But how are you it's doing, nice, Eric? Right? Uh, are Abby Hollinger, up. Irene Fitzhugh, Judy, all saying hello to you, Eric. Wow. Well, hello, everyone. Make sure you tune in tomorrow because we can continue this fun tomorrow. I mean, who knows what'll stop? Who will stop by tomorrow? We never know. <laughs> Eric, how was our boy Phil? Did he light up the uh, phone lines while he was on? He did. It was amazing. I didn't know what to do. I don't sing. I mean, you don't want to hear me sing. My kids tell me to stop singing. It's usually Beastie Boys sabotage, which is sung completely <laughs> off key, anyways. But uh, yeah, that's my talent is singing bad Beastie Boy songs. Yes. All right. I love it. But Phil did great. I, I mean, man, talking about an amazing voice. I thought it was funny. Everybody had requests. Like he's a jukebox. And I was right, like, right. hey, do some Skinner. And I'm like, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Somebody yeah, asked for him to sing a tool song. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you might not know that. So, so we were so talking fun. about eating out. Like, you know, there's all of these cases all over the country that are sort of, you know, everything is popping up. Arizona is lighting up. Florida has been lighting up. Uh, obviously, Tulsa, Oklahoma, we're going to have the convention. It's just going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out as we already see numbers spiking again in other countries. China yesterday, obviously showing the biggest spike and they don't want to have another Wuhan on their hands. So I don't understand how we're going into our second and third phases in a lot of parts of the East Coast, uh, while all these numbers are sort of going up in the early states, kind of setting the precedence as to what could happen. Or is it just an, um, a time of just, we got to get moving, we got to get the economy going, and we're going to do it at all costs, and we're rolling the dice and being as careful as we possibly can? What do you you know, think? One of the things I see is a lot of confusion in the data. Just to be honest, I don't want to get deep and not be funny, but a lot of it's it, you, you have certain people who are on Twitter way too often and apparently only know how to use cap lock, uh, you know, saying that everything's fine. The coronavirus basically fixed itself. You've got, you know, people who also pin op eds for the New York Times saying everything's fine. There's no spike. We don't know what you're talking about. Clearly, the data is opposite. I mean, I live on the West Coast. Our governor here in Oregon actually paused further openings to phase two, some in phase one. I mean, the city of Portland, which is known for its food and everything else, they just got open to phase one and it's mandatory mask, period, sins, don't cross it. We're being extra cautious and we're kind of looking back at Florida, Texas, 
Oklahoma, where that just seems to be confusion in itself, because apparently you need to wear a mask, but you don't. I mean, even in our own White House, the West Wing doesn't require masks anymore after the CDC says we should. And yeah. even our Surgeon General says, I think it's weird. I think part of it is, like Scott said, people are going stir crazy. They want to be outside. The weather's nice. But I don't think people get it. And I think the problem is we're not getting the right data. I know I don't want to catch it. I don't want to give it to my parents because my parents are still walking this earth and I love I mean, them dearly and I don't want yeah, to be well, I can tell you, I can tell you personally, Eric, I, I have experienced loss because of COVID and it happens very fast and quickly uh, where people uh, go into the hospital and they just never leave. Yeah. Um, um, and, 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 it, and, and, and they go in perfectly healthy in different age groups. You know, 61 is too young to die. 41, too young to die. I'm, I'm just saying like, it just, I just don't understand how people are willing to take those chances knowing that there really is no solution. And the only solution is regardless of what the government is saying, regardless of what, this is like almost human instinct, right? It's survival, right? And so, like you said, you, we're Americans. We're able to like figure out that there's some other medium line here. I mean, you, you're not sheep. You're not following what somebody's saying, right? But sometimes we look, I think sometimes we look entitled. And I say that after serving our country and going to third third world countries and kind of well, looking back at us, we look really Arrogance. entitled. Like you see other countries that are first world countries and they're like following the rules and they don't have the spike that we're seeing, what we've constantly seen. And it's just weird because you're just like, why are, what? oh, I won't give it to anybody. Like all of a sudden everybody has this mentality. I'm not contagious. I don't need to wear the mask. The mask bugs me. And it's like, yeah. okay, but you're willing to fly on an airplane with it. But you don't want to sit in a restaurant. Understand? You take your mask off to eat. You put it back on, and you go about your way. Are you willing? Are you you? You're a doctor suddenly. That's my yeah. thing. People just people are stubborn. I get it. It's beautiful outside. Even in the Pacific Northwest, it's not raining anymore. The sun is out. We love that. But put a mask on. Care about other people because somebody's got parents, and it's clearly contagious. Yeah, it's clearly bad. It's clearly spiking again. And I think people just need to be cautious. I know we want our freedoms. They were taken from us. We like eating out, getting our hair cut, nails done, all the fun stuff. But we still got to take care of each other. Live the life. Just put a mask on. Wash your hands. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because um, Aubrey Huff, Suk, a former baseball player, Aubrey Huff's been getting in trouble lately with all these controversial things. Today he tweets out, or it's either today or yesterday, he tweets out uh, – uh, hey, uh, I'm not wearing a mask anymore when I have to go inside a building. It's my constitutional right. Okay. Uh, this is BS. Who's with me? Mm -hmm. And I and I I actually tweeted him back. I wrote on top. I said, oh, Aubrey, I said, you make me laugh when you post these ridiculous tweets. I love comedy. Um, <laughs> and I just, you know, there, there, there are people there, there are people like that who just they just don't give a, a crap. No. Uh, and they feel and they're talking. It's like. Who constitutional right or not, man? You just you're, you're being safe. Public health. Is it's it really that health. difficult? It has, to do, it has nothing to do with constitutional yeah. rights. It's public health. Period. Yeah. Um, we all have is to it so hard to throw a mask on? Uh, but that's Aubrey. I mean, Aubrey Huff is like the magnet for you. Barely remember who he is as a baseball player, and he wants right. to be significant by being political. Yeah. And I've had people like, "Who is this guy?" I mean. It's right. kind of like how we feel about Sebastian Gorka. I'm like, who's this guy who's, you know, not even American bashing on our general? Yeah. Like, really? Be quiet. And Aubrey Huff, he just loves to see. He just likes to get attention. He He's all about the likes. Like, ooh, and like and uh, Eric, the, the last thing I wanted to hit you with was uh, Suki and I were just talking about it. I yeah. saw just before, uh, you know, Trump came out and said Colin Kaepernick uh, should now get another shot in the NFL. Uh, here was a guy who called Kaepernick an SOB and anyone who kneeled and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, what, what do you think of that turnaround by the old president day? It's amazing, right? Like when voting is needed and you see that you're really kicking <laughs> the teeth in the polls, all of a sudden, Kaepernick's a great quarterback. I mean, he deserves an opportunity if he's good enough. It's like, really? Right. You hated him. He was the worst guy on the planet. I mean, Cap's a, right. Cap's a good dude. I love his mission and what he's talking about. It's great to see everybody else getting behind him because absolutely yeah. what he talked about, people kind of ignored and turned it into a political thing. It's just so hypocrite. I mean, but I'm not shocked because who we're talking about making the statement. I mean, this is the same yeah. guy who four hours ago said we had a vaccine for the AIDS virus. So, eh, you know, we <laughs> can see, can stop. But I mean, it just has has Kaepernick come out and said anything about Goodell speaking about and saying yes, we want him. Nope. Has he been completely? Has anybody in his Kaepernick hasn't said anything? He hasn't, he hasn't said, said anything. anything. And you that's know, his personality. I mean, if you've been around Cap, you know Cap's personality is 
He's not going to say anything. In, he's already made a statement, and he was ridiculed for making it for two years and exiled out of the league. And then you have that whole fiasco of filming his workout and that whole thing. And now he turns around, and now everybody loves him, and he's like the you know leader of the pack now. And now to have yeah. this with the president, it just seems so like okay. I'm going to join the. I'm going to join everybody in on this. I mean, I don't know. Caps being quiet, and I like that. I think until Goodell apologizes. And Goodell's going to need to do that because they did ruin his career because the guy's clearly good enough to be a backup quarterback. And there's – Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look at teams who lost quarterbacks the last three years, Cap would have been a very healthy QB for any team to run with. And I can list countless that would have probably rather have him than Ryan Tannehill or Blaine Gabert or any one of these other backups. Until yeah. Goodell does that, then Cap will speak up. I, but, I really think there also needs to be some sort of reparations paid because they stole him out of a multi-million dollar career, a career that would have been very lucrative in many different ways. I yeah. think it's. I think they have to look at it very, very uh, with different optics. Uh, if if and when Goodell gives this apology, which I think a lot of people are hoping he does, um, I mean, I think it was a first step. His sort of like, I do think he should come back. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just it's interesting the turn of events that have happened in, in, in the last two and a half years of our of our lives. I mean, it's just really is it two and a half years or since Kaepernick yeah. took that knee? Is it two and a half years? You're going to be in quarantine because that's what the last 12 weeks feels like. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. But, Eric, um, tell, tell everybody where they could see the three of us tomorrow, my friend. Go check us out on Facebook or YouTube. You can check us out uh, to the point with Eric Mitchell on Facebook and to the point with Eric Mitchell on YouTube. It's pretty fancy. I know. Go check us out. We'll have their smiling faces and an awesome promo coming soon. And we'll have fun tomorrow. You never know who must stop by, but we will sing. We'll dance. What else did you promise, Scott? You promised juggling. I said we'll sing. We'll dance. We'll laugh. We'll cry. And we'll sing. By the way, he did that while kissing his Emmys. So uh, I don't know. (laughs) Suk, I brought out the Emmys. I brought out the Emmys for the promo. Yes, yes. I know. I know. I know. I know. We just keep bringing out the Emmys because, you know, why not, right? (laughs) Hey, if you have them, brag about them. I wish I had one. I have a Dundee. My son got me for Father's Day because I'm an off- guy, a guy fan of the office. So I'm proud. <laughs> Eric, we'll see you tomorrow, pal. Heck yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. Have a great Good evening. See you, Eric. Absolutely. Right, well, we'll Thanks. see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Sook, I, I told I told Eric maybe we uh maybe we'll have Phil pop in with us too. And then okay. you know, three of us can uh sing a little bit. I love uh, that. how I love you that. feeling? You know, we got we got Matt Fraser coming up in about five minutes. Matt's teeing up. Matt is in our. I mean, Matt is I mean, teeing up. Yeah, I mean, I think you know. Listen, I just feel like the the world that we're living. I mean, my kids finished school today, by the way. Nice, Suki. Very nice. Do you know the one thing they wanted today? What? A McDonald's hamburger and a McFlurry. Did you get? Did you get one? Wanted a McFlurry. Like my daughter thought it was like, please, got, I just need a McFlurry. I just you need gotta a go McFlurry, Suki. I got That's them. That's a normal appearance. That's a, yeah. Did you get it with the Oreos or the or the M and M's? Oreos, the Oreos. Ah, and nice, um, nice. and I also spoke to one funny mommy uh, today just to check in on her. Oh, yeah. How's her husband going? was doing because her husband wasn't feeling well, and she said any time to come back on the show. Just tell her when yeah. we'll figure it she out. She was on. Uh, she was on Access Hollywood, I think, as the most uh, like she Downloaded. became the most viral the viral celebrity for the quarantine. Quarantine, yeah. She's become the and you know what? She's our friend. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know who's our friend now, Suk? Go ahead. Matt Frazier. Matt Frazier. Matt Frazier. Matt Frazier. Hey, great to be here with you guys. Look at how good Matt, you look, Matt. Matt. I mean, seriously, look at how good you look right now. <laughs> hey, you know what? When the dead can see you all day long, you're always going to look your best. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Matt. Matt. Matt, you you right now look like you're ready to star in Star Trek: The Next Generation, my friend. Oh, you think so? Listen, you gotta you gotta dress yeah. to impress. You gotta dress to you impress. Look good, man, cool. you look like you got the captain seat going. How you doing, bud? How's like is, is the show on? You, you guys on hiatus right now? With with we the are show? we we are. You know, it's really sad because we were you know really going strong and going well. We we're actually supposed to be uh, filming right now, but because of COVID nineteen. You know, everything was canceled, which is really sad because, you know, we were looking forward to this. This whole season, too, was supposed to be about my readings and about, you know, uh, yeah. my touring and everything that's been coming up. And with the shows being canceled and everything being canceled, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So we're really up in the air. It's, it's really sad. 
So Matt, for people who haven't seen the E show, I mean, you and your family are incredible, funny, um, just loving. Um, I mean, it is like, I feel a part of your family. Like, I don't know. I just get it. I get it. I get your mother. I get everybody. I don't know. I, you are hysterical. Um, I don't have to, have you always been this superstar kind of kid in this group, this massive family, like this kind of jogging for position? Well, you know, what's funny is that I never, I don't even think that I'm the funniest one in my family. I think that my sister is so much more you? funnier than, than I am. <laughs> Absolutely. I think my sister is like, my sister and my mother are like the breakout stars. I, I really do. <laughs> Your mother you know, is the breakout star. <laughs> my mother's something, that's for sure. Let me tell you, when we got this TV show, if you haven't seen my show, Meet the Frasers on E!, um, when this all first started and we got approached to do a TV show, I was like, I don't know how this is going to go because my family are not TV people. Like my mother, when she found out the film crews were coming and we were being on a reality show, she was told just be herself. So she just was herself. She just <laughs> didn't dye her hair. She didn't buy any new clothes. She was That's walking it. around. She didn't even, she had the gray, the gray stripe, like the, <laughs> like the skunk going down the back of her. I'm like, Ma, you're gonna be on national TV. Yeah, you said it's reality, be myself, this is myself. Like she just did, everyone just, they didn't play it up for camera. So, you know, everything that you see on the show is really real. It's our day-to-day -day life. And you know, <laughs> unfortunately the dead don't scare me, but my family does because you know. <laughs> <laughs> the dead don't scare me, my family does. Oh, that's a, you know what? That's a great, great title for a book, man. That's a good title. Oh, you know what? That um, should be my next book. That absolutely is it, is it the title of your next book because that's pretty good. You know, it might it might have to be. It might have to be. What's good. the book you got behind you right there? I see so, you on the cover of that book. This is actually my brand new book that just 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 came out. It's called When Heaven Calls: um, Life Lessons from America's Top Psychic Medium. This is it. I'm really oh, excited. I love, I love that. And yeah, and it's all about it's all about my life growing up psychic. It's about because you know if you haven't seen the show, basically I'm a psychic medium. My mom is a psychic medium, and so was my grandmother. But it's so funny because I grew up seeing and hearing the. I grew up. Oh God bless you. I grew up seeing and hearing. Oh, bless you again. Thank you. Okay. Listen, did you bring me on the show just to give you blessings today? Yeah. Truky, take a call. <laughs> I need all the blessings, them. Matt. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you. Thank God you're coughing over there. You don't. You. You. Uh, Matt. Uh, Matt. Uh, my, Matt. I apologize. I'm my sorry. My allergies. <laughs> it's they're terrible. <laughs> Listen, it's better to be leaking from the attic than the basement. That's what they tell me. <laughs> 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 but I've never anyway, heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta tell you, I you know, I, I started I, I wrote this book because it was very different living in my house because my sister is the only one who, you know, was never given the gift of psychic ability. It's it's really funny because like I said, my grandmother was a medium, my mom's a medium, but my sister, she can barely talk to the living, never mind the dead. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because I live at home, and this is what my reality TV show is about, is that I live at home with two skeptics because, you know, my sister was skeptical of psychics and mediums because I grew up, you know, saying I was seeing and hearing dead people and my sister could never see or hear anything whatsoever. And then you had my father who, you know, has been 21 in the years in the Navy. He's been out of my life. He was out of my life for a long time because obviously he was out to sea, you know, with uh, the war that was going on in Iraq and Afghanistan and all of that. And he was in Desert Storm. So he was always out to sea. So it was just me, my mom and my sister. So he never knew really about my abilities or even that my mom was a medium or, you know, the gifts that ran in her family. And then one day he came back, you know, and retired from the Navy and he's like, oh my God, my son is a medium. So I talk, my, my story is all about my backstory. It's about growing up being psychic and transitioning to where I am now, because you can remember that when I was first growing up, I was petrified of this. I literally feel I have to imagine, from the sixth sense. Right? Because because I, I would imagine you have to protect yourself like for the energies that so many things that are coming at you. You have to be able to turn it on and turn it yeah. off, protect yourself from things that you don't. I mean, is that what you do? Or is that is that how you kind of, as you were young, kind of figuring out how to kind of manifest this, this gift that you've been given? Well, when I was younger, you got to remember that 
I didn't realize that I was psychic. I mean, I could see and hear dead people, but you try telling a three or four or five year old that they were psychic. You don't know what that is. I have no idea what that means. I literally grew up convinced thinking that the house was haunted or thinking that, you know, um, any, everywhere where I was going was haunted. I didn't realize that it was something that was just with me. So, you know, I, I tried as hard as I possibly could to push this gift away. I didn't want to see the departed. I didn't want to hear the departed. I didn't want to connect with the other side. I just wanted to live a normal life. Normal life. And because of that, I really missed my calling a little bit. I wasn't sure what it was that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and I actually always felt the need to help others. And I started my career in life as an EMT, which is an emergency medical technician. Right, right. And I worked at the World Trade Center in Boston. Wow. And then it was around that time that I was like, you know what? I need to dig back into this. I have to understand what it is that I'm pushing away. So I went to go and see a medium for the first time because all my family did, they, like I said, they never did it professionally. They just kept it hidden. So I went to go as, to see a medium for the first time myself and it completely changed my life. It showed me that, you know, oh my God, I can do this too. But not only that, that I could help people to heal by putting them back in touch with their loved ones. So I started to read for close friends and family members. And then next thing you know, word traveled quickly about the one who could speak to the dead in the small town of Rhode Island, you know, Rhode Island. in Rhode Island. And I was asked to Princeton, be on Rhode Island. Princeton, Rhode Island. I was asked to be on Fox News and CBS Radio and all of these different places. And then, you know, next thing you know, I had to leave my job as an EMT to do this full time. Wow. Hey, Matt, when you I know you're doing stuff online now, right? You have readings for people online. Is it, it do you get the same sense from people online as you do when like you're in a, in the middle of an audience? Is it is it does it come to you just as easy when you got people in boxes like Suki and I are right now? <laughs> yes, actually it does. And it's funny because when I first started doing this and I first started, you know, um when COVID-19 struck and whatnot, everybody was like, Matt, you know, I need to know that my loved ones are with me. I need to know that, you know, how do I know that my mom's with me? How do I know my dad's with me? How do I know that my departed you know, um, husband is with me. And I really wanted to do something special for everybody because I felt really bad because my tours were, were getting canceled and, you know, uh, people really come to these events looking for answers and validation and inspiration. So yeah. I sat down with my team and I'm like, what can we do? Can we do a live event online? And they're like, well, I don't know. Does your gift work in that way? Will you be able to read, you know, if we do um, a live event online? And I'm like, well, how the hell do I know? I don't know. So we're like, let's try it. So it was crazy because the moment that I started to connect with everybody and, the, and you know, everyone started to come up in the screen in the little boxes, as you call it, all of a sudden I started to see and, you know, sense their loved ones in spirit as well, just like at a live event. So we did the first one and it was so successful where so many people were just, you know, so many people got readings and heard from loved ones that we did it again and again and again. And now, uh, now it's become like a weekly thing. Every week I do these online group readings. Wow. And that's great. It's amazing. You be, yeah, you must you must be sold out for a long time. I bet. I bet you there's a long line of people. Well, tomorrow events, uh, tomorrow night's event is sold out, but I am doing one next Thursday as well. And you know, I it's it's very different than in person. I wanted to do something that was very special just for COVID because so many of us are alone, and this is the time when we're missing our loved ones. We're by ourselves. You know, we're not able to see our family members. We're thinking mm -hmm. about our, our memories of uh, yeah. you know the people that had passed on. So what I did was I, I formed these events and your whole family can attend for just $19. Oh, wow. So, wow. Because yeah, normally it's expensive to come to see me. Very, like, very expensive. Yeah. You know, it's like normally like $60 a ticket. So I'm like, you know what? Let's do something special. So now your whole family can come. It's just $19 and you can be part with your family with the group reading event. So if you're quarantined with somebody, yeah. you can all take part so in the I, experience. Irene Fitzhugh is watching. She says that her and her sister are having deja vu watching you. So I don't know. Like if they're <laughs> they're having like a weird moment with you, um, Judy Rogers. Can, say so many things. If, yeah, go ahead. If people want to, if people want to get involved with this one, Matt, for the nineteen ninety nine next week, where do they go? Because I know a lot of folks we have on here uh, are very into getting in touch with folks who have passed, kids, parents, grandparents. How can they get onto this uh, special you got going on next week? So if you, you guys, um, if the dead can find me, so can you. I'll start with that. So the best way to find me is meetmattfraser.com. That's my website, meetmattfraser.com. 
And okay. um, if you just go to live events, you just click that and that's how you can register online. And like I said, if you're, if you are attending, bring your family members with you, have, you know, your sister sit in, have your brother sit in, have anyone who's with you sit in, because I love when I can deliver a message to a whole family as opposed to just one person. Beautiful. Beautiful. Unbelievable. Now, when you, here, I got to come in across the screen. Oh, I love this. I love this. Huh? Yeah. Come on, man. This is oh, this something. is like, this is like, um, you know, an Amber <laughs> Alert just for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is breaking news right now. Breaking news. Amber just Alert. Just <laughs> Matt, let me ask you a question. Do you do you do you get anything from Suki or myself coming through to you as we speak? Yeah, well, Scott, did you lose your father? Yes. Your father's right behind you. When I'm looking at you, this is how it works. I start to see and feel the departed, and your father's sitting right behind you in spirit, which is his way really? of letting you know that he's here, yes. Because I see what? the departed. So that's the reason why we were wondering how this was going to work online, because they're like, Matt, how the hell do you do a reading? And I'm like, well, I see them and I sense them, but it's better when I see them, because I like to tell you who's with you or sitting behind you. And right when I'm looking at you, your dad is right there. And wow, that's amazing. Yes. My dad is telling me when I'm connecting with him that he had a lot of issues within his body before he left this world because he's bringing that through. But also he's yeah. telling me that his passing was pretty unexpected when I'm speaking to him because he was dealing with his health and he was struggling with his health. But he says to me, I wasn't expecting to die at the moment that I did. Mm. Yeah, and, no, it happened. It happened pretty quick. And your father says to me that you never got to say goodbye to him. Did you uh, see that? That is that is correct, yes. And your father's taking correct. this opportunity and saying, listen, I need my son to know that it wasn't about saying goodbye. It's about the things that you did for him beforehand. It's about wow. the way that you were there for him, the way that you checked up on him, the way that you were so connected with him, and your dad's bringing that up. And was he, like, big into sports here in this world? Because he keeps showing me sports up, and I keep, I keep seeing the hats. How do you connect with the sports hats? Like, do you have his sporting hats or things? Well, I'm a sportscaster. But wait a minute, with your father. I'm talking about with your dad. Um, you know what? Once in a while, he was always busy on the road once in a while. He took us to sporting events like WWE or Met Games at Shea Stadium back in the day. But yeah, no, I don't I don't know. Not not really, but we did we did some stuff. Well, he's showing me when I'm connecting that I feel like that that's what got you into sports. So that's what was was your breakthrough. Because your dad says to me that he always loved that here in this world. And he also loves when I'm connected with him because it was a balance of that. But he also shows me that he loves like being outdoors. He loves at the outside when I'm connecting with him. And your okay. father, your father's telling me that, you know, the things that he wants you to remember are the times that you had with him before he had gotten sick. He says, I know that there were times when we were out of each other's life or we were distant from one another. He says, but I want you to know that I am right there and that I am OK because he's acknowledging that. Aww. That's good to know. That's beautiful. Good to and know. I'm glad to hear it. Suki, I want to come over to you because there's a woman that's coming through that I felt also passed a, with you that's standing behind you that's telling me that she had memory issues before her passing. Who had the dementia or the Alzheimer's? The Alzheimer's or the dementia? Maybe Eric's grandmother? Uh, my husband's grandmother? It had to be because she was showing me that she's here. She's got a little dog with her that she's with. And she had like a little dog that used to follow her like everywhere here in this world. Oh, that could be my grandmother. Hello. Yeah, I think that's her because she's here and she's sitting with me in this little, this little dog that's on her lap. Oh, my God. That could be my grandmother because she always had Pomeranians. Yeah, Perfect. she's here. And I thought this was your mother because she shows me that she was very involved in your life and very involved. She in your like my life. mother. She raised me. Yeah. So she says to me that she wants you to know that she's here and that she's with you. And when I'm connecting with her, I keep smelling all her potpourri. She said potpourri all over the house. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Smelling yeah. That when I'm connecting with her. <laughs> And she tells me that she had a hand in naming you as well. So did she? Yes, she you? did. She says to me, you know, she got that name from me. She's saying she named me. You're right. She. Did. I know. I, I talked to them. I must be so <laughs> And this is how I see them. I didn't know if this is your, if this was your mother or if My it was grandma. your mother. I feel emotional bonds, and when I'm connecting with her, she kept saying to me, you know, I was her mom. I was her mom. And yeah. she showed me she's got this dog that she's petting on the other side when I'm connecting oh, with her. And she goes, she goes, you need to let her know that it wouldn't be heaven without my dogs there. 
She it's goes, so and she, true. Oh my got, gosh. She's got all of like six or seven Pomeranians. But you know what's crazy? Your grandmother <laughs> was a little bit kooky. She used to yes! like yes. She Fun, to, fabulous, outrageous. Oh, wait a minute. She used to do all these like little hairdos and things on her dogs. <laughs> like, she told me her putting them like in the kitchen sink and like washing them. And like she would have like, like these these dogs were like became like her children. And I she's love the it. Yes, yes. And she says to me that the one thing that she wants to let you know is that, you know, she was, that you were always very different than anybody else in your family. She oh, says yeah. that you've always been very, she goes, you weren't afraid to be different. She says, you weren't afraid to be yourself. She says, and you were always very adventurous because she's acknowledging that. I was, and, and I, I am very different. <laughs> <laughs> she says to me, she says, listen, she goes, I she, like I felt your grandmother was the only one that really understood you. Like the rest yes. of your family did it. Yes. And this is on my father's side. So yes, my grandmother's yeah, mm -hmm, definitely. And she says to me, you know, I want you to let you know. She goes that I've been with you with all all <laughs> I've, I've been with you through all of this journey. I do feel her all the time. I mean, she like raised me till you know, she passed away when I was 25. So I I feel her all the time with me and I I pray to her. Um, I pray to her. I pray to her to protect me all the time and my family. Wait a minute. Did you keep like something of hers in your vehicle? Like she kept telling me you, she was in your car. So you have like yeah. either a beat or something in your car of hers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's that's weird because my husband drives his grandmother's car, and it's got every Jesus photo ever imaginable. Nothing has changed. I mean, it's pretty funny uh, because. Um, I wonder if that's also uh, Eric's grandma. That's interesting. That'd be really interesting. Oh, definitely. Uh, probably the both of them. Sit down. Just sit down really quickly. Sit down. <laughs> you oh, Matt, you, open, Matt, you yeah. opened it up yeah. now, bud. You just opened it up. Eric, come here. You can see, this is not here. a spirit. This is my cat yeah. over here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> say it, oh, say my hello. This is what happens when you do the Facebook lives. So you get the. You get the all, Does you have a bow tie on? What? Does he have a bow tie on? This is the little girl. She's a, she's got the where are you? Oh, she's got a bow. She's got a little bow on. Yes, yeah. beautiful. Look at those oh, eyes. Yeah, wow, she's pretty. They always gonna be right here. They so they always. Have to be. What do you think about the newfound fame? What does your sister think about it? What does your mother think about it? I mean, E is a pretty big deal. Well, I gotta tell you, they don't even know that they're like famous. They don't even realize like the family's famous. Like they just go out and like do whatever they're gonna do. My mother doesn't even dress up. She just goes out with her hair all done, like with her hair all messed up. Like she just, get, get down off of it. This isn't your five moments of fame. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, this is, this is what it's like living in this house. It's like a reality show all day long. But no, she's, I she, it. I gotta tell you, my, my sister and my mom and my dad, they just go about their life. Like, it's so funny. People will come up and they're like, oh, can we take a picture? Yeah, right. And then they'll back to grocery shopping five minutes later. Like, they don't think anything of it. They don't even, my mother doesn't, I don't even think she realizes that, like, we have a show on TV. Because I'm like, I tell her all the time, like, like mom, like, you know, you, you should fix up before you leave the house. Like, you know, people might want to take your photos. She's like, well, I, what do, you think that people are going to know me? I'm like, yeah, you're on every TV in, the, in, in America. Like, of course people are going to know you. And they always have it on like reruns, you know, he has like, you know, when they have their shows, yes. they, have, they play it back all the time. Um, I love it, I love let it. me ask you a question, Matt. When, when you finally decided to leave being an EMT and decided to give this a run, what, how did E find you? Like, how did they, how did somebody find you? Well, you know, so you're going to know that I've been, that was 10 years ago. So when oh, I, wow. I've, been doing, I've been doing this for 10 years so before I had a TV show, you can remember I've already I already had a two year waiting list for private readings. I had already been reading for different celebrities. I had been already offered many. I was offered many different TV shows, and at the same time, I was on a national tour and I already had written one book. So this is my second book. So I already had a career. I already was was doing this. You know, heaven had led me on this amazing journey of helping people, and I didn't want to sell out. I didn't want to do like I was approached weekly. Matt, like all these crazy things, right? So if it's so like I'll tell you, people like were were coming to me and they're like, Matt, you know, I want to go and uh do a show about you going into haunted houses and you know, uh that wasn't what we wanted to do. Do, do I look like do I look like Ghostbusters? No, you, you don't look, look like Ghostbusters. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I have to ask you a question because Judy that Rogers is saying that. She's saying, Matt, my son Carl has been gone for seven years now. He passed away on the 22nd of this month. I'm very sad. I miss him dearly. And she just wanted to know how she can, you know, connect because she loves your show. And she just, just was curious. I know you don't know Judy. I don't, I know you don't feel, I mean, she's just on Facebook right now, but 
how does somebody like that every day, like when they're trying to connect with somebody they love so dearly and the date of their passing is coming, how do they cope with that? Well, I feel that every one of us has a phone call, a, a phone line to heaven. And there's a phone call that we can make to our loved ones on the other side. And what I try to teach people is that, listen, I love when you come to me. I love when I'm able to, to give a reading and to help you. But what I want to teach people every day is that you don't need somebody like me. Your loved ones are with you every single day. They're with you, you know, when you're when you wake up in the morning, they're with you when you're on your ride to work. They're with you when you're in the car, you know, when they watch over you, you know, throughout your whole life. And what I want to teach people is that you too can connect with them. You just have to look for the signs. They come to us in many different ways. Maybe you sense or feel their presence. Maybe all of a sudden you smell a smell. Like when I was connecting with your grandmother, I smelled the potpourri. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you go and um, may, maybe you go and all of a sudden you'll start to have a dream of them or just have random memories of, of them. These are all signs that your loved ones use to reach you. But you know, that's the same reason why I've been trying to do these group readings online because I know that so many people live in different cities, states, and locations, and even different countries. So, you know, this is an opportunity where if you've seen me give readings on TV, you've heard me give readings on the radio, now you can join and be a part of this and be with people who are going through the same thing that you're going through. You yeah. know, that pain of losing a loved one. Because when you're with people who have lost somebody and have felt your pain or are going through what you feel, and then all of a sudden you watch them go and to start to heal at the same time and you're, and you're with them through that process and you receive messages and hear messages, it's an amazing experience. I don't think there's not one person here in this, in this chat, because I'm looking through here, that's not thinking of their loved ones that have passed right now. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, their mom or their dad or anyone that, that they've lost. You know, it's so funny because you talk about energies and stuff and it comes into your house. I mean, there have been moments I'm folding my laundry and I feel like something like passed by and I'm like, and I know it's somebody that's there to say hello. I like literally, I'm like, what? you know what Judy said? She smells or one of those locks all on. the time. Oh yeah. She smells it, it alone all the time. It, it's amazing how they come through to us. You know, we just have to recognize the signs that they used to send to us. You know, I feel that, you know, I feel very blessed to be doing this work because I really want to be like a teacher. I just want to teach people that, listen, they're they're not far away. And that's the reason why, you know, I like to get dressed up. I like to wear things that are different or things that are that are unique because, I, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this TV show with E. Because this show with E is more about my family than it is the readings because people have seen me so many times, right, give readings on TV shows, on radio shows, you know, I've, I've, I've been everywhere, you know, on Real Housewives of Orange County, on Botch, on all these different TV shows. And I wanted people to really see, you know, the behind the scenes of my life. Because the thing is, is that there's nothing spooky about me. You know, some people still get misconceptions when they think of psychic mediums. They think that I'm yeah. you know, hovering around a crystal ball all day or like reading coffee grinds or things like that. When really, I feel like I'm just a, a normal 28-year-old guy who's just gifted, who's just jo able to Joanne Fanslow says that she celebrates, you know, them with cake and, 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 you know, and just, you know, celebrates them with a favorite dinner that they love, even though that they've gone just to think about them. Louise says, what about blue jays and red cardinal sightings? They always say that it's family members saying hello. Yes, birds, right? Birds well, I mean, it's any way that they can get your attention that means something to you. It has to mean something to their personality, right? So, you know, I've seen so many signs that loved ones send. I mean, you could get pennies from heaven. You could see dragonflies. You could see butterflies. You could hear their, their favorite song come on the radio. You could feel their presence. You might um, see somebody out in the mall that looks exactly like them. You might all of a sudden start to see repeating numbers that were the day that they, they died or the day that they left this world. You know, you got to understand the reason why. You I hear them? Because Diane says, my dad's been gone for three years and I sometimes hear my name. Oh, absolutely. Said. And, you know, let me just start with this. We know when your loved ones pass, there's, there's a, a way that they come through when they try to reach us. And the first thing that you'll notice was when someone first passes, right? They also have to learn to communicate with us. So the same way we're learning to communicate with them, they're also learning to communicate with us. And I've noticed that there's a, cer a series of things that happen when they first pass on and go to the other side in terms of the signs or the ways they use to reach us. The first being is that when someone first passes, 
The way that they try to reach us is you'll notice you'll wake up the same time every single night. So if you keep waking up at 3 in the morning or 3.22 or 3 o'clock in the morning after someone just recently passed, that's the, the first way. The second way is you'll notice things starting to repeat themselves. Maybe you see that same bird, that same cardinal everywhere you go. Maybe you see butterflies, you know, every time you're thinking about your grandmother. Maybe, you know, you keep seeing that, that num those numbers on the license plate repeating. And then the next thing that they'll do is they'll come through in dreams or they'll try to come through in dreams. Oh, yeah. And then if that doesn't work, the other way that they'll, they'll come through is that spirit is energy. So they can come through, you know, where all of a sudden your phone might go off or your TV might go off or use different ways. And it, that really just shows me that they're trying to get in touch with you and let you know that, you know, I made it to the other side, that I am okay That's and that right. I am with you. I mean, a lot of people, like Irene Fitzhugh says that her husband's been gone for 22 years and sometimes she wakes up at night and she can mm -hmm. feel him, like feel him, like an energy beside her, you know, and I've actually been privy to that presence sometimes where I'm like, whoa, I feel, I, you know, I could have sworn like my grandma's favorite chair. I could have sworn I saw her maybe five times sitting in that chair as I'm walking up my father's house, turned and I look and I was like, I thought I saw her there but she wasn't there. Obviously she was gone. So you, 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 they do come like their energy, their field of energy does come, right? Oh yeah. And they are really there. They, you know, that is really them. For example, when you dream of a loved one, you know, when spirits pass on, when you leave your physical body behind, because this is just a vehicle, but our soul looks just like the way that we do. So when I say, I see your dad sitting behind you, or I see your mom sitting behind you, I don't see air. I don't see an orb. I don't see electricity. I see, a sh I see you know, their, their figure. An their energy. Figure wow. You know? Matt. So um, let me just finish That's up. The, so the, the way that they come through is when we they pass on, they become energy. And when we go to sleep, our minds is energy. So that's the reason why they're able to reach us in that way is because, you know, our thoughts are energy, their energy. So that our, our when we go to sleep, our head becomes like the conference room where they can connect. Wow. Right. You know, it was wild a long time ago after my dad passed away. Um, you know, it's been about 18, 19 years, right? And I think about three or so years after he passed away, we bought, you know, the, the Wii came out and the video mm -hmm. game, you know, a couple new video games. So we, we I got that Call of Duty with my kids, the Army game, right? Yes. We went to, it, was a, it was a brand new game. My dad was in the Army. Hold on, the, hold on that thought for one second. Let me let this cat out. This is like oh, over here. <laughs> hold on. Before, let, me show, let me let this cat out before T Carol Baskin comes after me. Uh, <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, anyway, so, so we opened up the game. It was brand new. And when we went, where it says to, you know, you got to put in your name before you start playing the game, there was a name already in the game. And it was D O N Don, which was my father's name. And it was the freakiest thing I'd ever seen. I was like, holy cow. But, you know, those are signs that like really just hit you over the head. And those are the signs that really show you, oh, my God, they're there. Yeah, it, it was wild. The guy's name was right in there on, a, on an army game. And I was I was like, wait, I didn't write that in there. That, it, when we turned it on, his name was in there on the game. It was it was it was crazy. And, you know, what's even more crazy is that what, how crazy is it to think like when my grandmother was alive? She never shared her gifts. She never shared her ability. So I feel very blessed and honored to be doing this work because back in those days, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, imagine having conversations like this. Imagine you talking about this in the 50s. Like you couldn't do it. People would think that you're crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So, you know, I feel, I feel really honored to have the platform that I do, to have the TV show that I do, because I want to teach people that it's okay to talk about these experiences. It's okay to yeah. share these experiences and, you know, to talk about your loved ones and to talk about how you feel them or sense them or connect with them, because really it just inspires others. You know, yeah. it's so funny <laughs> because people have like very distinct, like you were talking about technology. Irene Fitzhugh said, I had a birthday reminder on Facebook to wish my father-in-law happy birthday. He never was on Facebook and passed away in 2004. But do you, see, do you see on here, uh, like Suki, I, like I'm looking at all of these people, like Deb, I, I see Deborah Hannon. Deborah Hannon says she smells chocolate in my living room every time her mother yeah. passed away from COPD, but she could never eat chocolate because it was a mucus producer. And after she passed away, her and her sister found huge boxes of chocolate. And you have uh, Dina, like everybody on here who's writing in, right? And, yeah. and Judy Rogers, and we yeah. have Louise Lupo, and yeah. everybody who's who's tuning in right now, 
it's, it's, it's writing about the different signs that they have. We have Joanne uh, Fanslow, I think is how you say the name. Yeah, Joanne Fanslow, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, um, oh, everybody's writing in the different signs. You know, we're all experiencing the same thing. And, you know, it's amazing how every single person who's tuning in have fe has felt or sensed in some way, you know, their loved ones. And, you know, I love this because signs are really a language that, you know, the other side is, is using to try to get our attention. And I actually go... And I actually have a whole course just about signs that I teach because it really is a language that we can decode and receive messages. You know, it's so funny or numbers. My husband sometimes sees numbers and Donna Freshetto says that she sees 717 all the time. And that number means something to her, you know, like uh, that's, that's her dad's birthday. Um, so I, 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 I actually believe that they're always around us um, and they come to protect us and hold us close, you know, because once you have that life, that connection, how could it just go away, right? How could it just, right. leave, you know? Yeah. Um, and I um, think they come to us when we really need them, when we really, really need them. When you call they do, out. especially, you know, especially times like this, right? Especially during times of, co like, like in COVID. You know, anytime we're going through a really challenging situation or a really emotional situation or something that's really, really tough, those are the times when our loved ones are the, are the strongest. That's the, the time when they come through and they reach us and connect with us and really show their presence because they want us to know that, you know, we're really not alone, that they're sending us love, they're supporting us, and that they're still our parents on the other side. They're still, you know, loving us and being supportive, just like they would have done here in this world. Aww. Matt, thank you so much for hanging out Matt, with you're us. Buddy. Incredible. You're incredible. You're incredible. MattFraser.com. Meet MattFraser.com. Bring your family and friends for a reading. He does group readings. They'll be beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you when, so much. When is the when is the the one for nineteen ninety nine for the family that you were talking about? That's next Thursday. Oh, it's actually just nineteen dollars. It's not even nineteen ninety nine. So next okay. Thursday, there, there's listen this. So tomorrow, I'll is take so, the extra ninety nine. That's I'll get the extra ninety nine. <laughs> so so uh, tomorrow is sold out, but next Thursday it's at seven o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you would like to attend, you can go to meetmattfraser.com. And just like I'm seeing you guys right now on the screen, yeah. I'll be able to see the people who tune in on their cameras. So all you need is a cell phone or a laptop or a computer to attend with the, with the camera. And that's it. You're live with me. So instead of seeing Scott and Sku Suki, you'll see yourself. And you're I love it. I love it, Matt. I love Matt, it. You. Listen, if you hear any more from my father, you let me know. Oh, I sure will. I'll send them right your way. <laughs> Matt, you're the best, buddy. We love Thank you, pal. You. Thank Continue you. Thank you. Listen, when the show comes back on and you come got the new on, ones, I want, I want you to come back on. Fingers crossed, crossed it comes back. Let's 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 hope. I mean, right now it's such a crazy time that oh, it'll come back on. It You're will. an incredible personality. You have so much love to share, oh. so much energy to give, and you know what? That's what it people will, need right now. People need to be understand that they're part of a bigger, bigger purpose and a bigger community, and you you really afford that to people. So you'll be back on. Oh, well, thank you. Steve so Rogers said thanks a million. Diana Gonzalez, Donna Matt, Freshetto. Thank you, buddy. You. Thank you. It was great being here with you both. See you later. Bye. Thank Bye. you, my friend. He's so cute, isn't wow, he? Wow, so, too. Yeah, look, he came out. I he said, hey, believe he came out and said your father right away. Right away. And, you know, once you go into that, you got me, you know? Yeah, I know. So that was pretty good. Pretty good. Beautiful. Uh, listen, it's... Uh, David G, you know, COVID free. From that was some bed. pretty deep stuff. Should we should we finish off with a little visit from the weatherman? Yeah, let's finish off. <laughs> David G, COVID free from the banks of the Atlantic. Of the Atlantic. Hi, right, ladies and gentlemen. It was a beautiful day today. Let's check in with our resident weatherman, David Bird G. In the here on the Outer Banks of the Atlantic, where tonight I have the distinguished honor of cutting the ribbon on the first ever Suki and Scotty gift shop. But first, I had a chance to spend the weekend with some friends in Central Park, and somehow the paparazzi found me again. Turns out my butt cheeks wound up on the front page of the New York Post. Not sure if you saw this picture. The reason why you didn't see me on Monday is because I took a flight to L.A. to spend some time with the Kardashian's plastic surgeon. He gave me some options on how to change my look 
to avoid the paparazzi, and I thought I'd share them with you. There was the younger David G. option with the beard. I kind of liked that one. The furry David G. option, the bear look, or the Caitlyn Marie Jenner look, which I'm definitely not ready for that one. Okay, let's get right to our active phone weather forecast. Tomorrow, Thursday, mostly cloudy, 77. Friday, partly cloudy, 80. And now, my friends, as promised, I present to you the first of many Suki and Scotty gift shops. Follow me. Hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs, books. We got it all. This is David G. Sipping on that tea. Still COVID free. <laughs> Saying, have a great night, everybody. <laughs> Scotty, can I tell you, can you imagine if we had a gift shop? That'd be incredible. One day, one day, Scotty. I love it. I love David G for thinking that it's possible. Can you imagine the if he parted the Red Sea to our I gift would love shop? It. I would love to see it. I love you, David G. You're so good looking. <laughs> Listen, before we go, I want to play. I got one more video I want to play for you. Uh, it's It's pretty funny. You're going to like this one. You ready? But I saw this. Uh, one of our viewers actually sent this to us today. I believe, I think Donna, um, if I'm not mistaken. Here, watch this, Sue. Very funny. Hey, Donna. Donna Freshetto? Donna Wana. Uh, here, watch this. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Get aboard. Yeah, put the chair. I'm Oh, isn't that funny? Oh, that, was yeah. funny. Thank you. that was hilarious. I'm saving you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want it. Anyway. Um, oh, man. So, well, that was uh, an interesting Debbie, show. Too. We're saying goodbye to Wyatt. Bye, Wyatt. Thanks for watching us. Bye, Wyatt. Happy birthday, buddy. Was it Wyatt's birthday? No, he was just watching with Debbie. That's it. Oh, all right. Boy, oh, boy. <laughs> all right. Listen, so uh, tomorrow, Suki and I will be on To The Point. With Eric Mitchell. Well, Let's you know, we, get should every, we should give everybody a, a little 12 o'clock, like, you know, buzz or something. Yeah, 12 that we'll, uh, we'll share it on our page, Sook, so um, they could see us okay. being interviewed. Very exciting. Okay. This is our second, inter it's our second interview, Sook. We're going we big, it. Scotty. We're just big. We're just big. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Joanne Pennypacker. Take care. I love Joanne's name. Joanne Pennypacker. Who, who? Joanne Pennypacker. Yeah, don't you love her name? Where is that? I don't see that. Joanne, right there underneath Sweetie Brookshire and Louise. Oh, see, I, oh, see I'm reading them off the uh, – you're reading it right off the screen on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, see, I get them. I get them after yeah. you on, on the on the screen. I love Joanne's, la Joanne's last name, Joanne Pennypacker. Joanne Pennypacker. All right. I like it. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Souk, we got uh, Tony Katane. Coming on Here the show. Here we go. Get on my own. Hopefully she, rem hopefully she remembers and we can uh, get that done. Uh, and another gentleman who does a phenomenal impression. Remember the guy who came on? He was dressed as President Trump. Yes. And we couldn't get you on because for some I mean, reason. It's kind of ironic that he's coming on tomorrow and I pulled my back today. Just saying. Yeah, well, listen. Listen. He's coming on tomorrow, but he's not coming on as Trump because he does Trump and a bunch of other voices. So I told him we wanted him on as himself with all these other voice. But he, I mean, he's been on Howard Stern doing Donald Trump. 
Hmm. Uh, I mean, he's really got the voice now, but he's got a bunch of other voices. So we got him. We got Tawny. And uh, hmm. the, the freight train keeps on rolling. We do. Great show. Jody Parsons says, another great show. Just loved you guys. Have a great night. Debbie Hollinger says, love you guys. This is the best time. All right, Tony Katane, Anita Anderson saying good to see everybody. Judy Rogers thinking of you and keeping you in our thoughts and prayers. So yes. there you go. All right, Sook. I will uh, see you tomorrow. I love Plus you. Tomorrow. Thursday? Thursday? Thursday. 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 And we hit the end broadcast. End broadcast.